Um, so do you want to do roll call and then we can do some introductions? I apologize for having to change the meeting for spring break a couple weeks ago. So. You're the boss and I can so. Yeah, and I, I'm a follower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Chesterfield County, uh, Tim Davey. Here. Uh, Henrico County, Frank Thornton. Hanover County, uh, Charles Waddell. Here. City of Richmond, Jacob Giovia. Houston County, Neil Spoonhauer. And RVA Martha Heater. Here. And Rashonda Lanita Jackson. Here. And Sid. Here. So I will do just a quick introduction. Um, we were just talking before the meeting. Um, the evolution for the commission, as you know, and part of what we talk about in these meetings is, has been kind of the um, implementation of our strategy, uh, the strategic planning framework that we initiated back in 2018, finished in 2019. And um, a big part of that was the formation of this committee moving forward with uh, the establishment of the community engagement manager, but also the establishment of a new position around data. So Serene is actually here with us this morning. Um, first day on the job as our principal data manager. So he's coming in to lead our organization's efforts to organize our data and think strategically about how to um, create the business model for that. So. Welcome wanna... aboard, and you probably know the, the, the maximum power R squared data are round. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, my name is Sarin Adhikari. I, I used to work uh, at VCU at the Center for Urban and Regional Analysis. And Plan RVA is uh, not a new entity for me. We have also worked in the past. Uh, starting from i believe 2017 nba where we were on the same table and also um the the community indicators project that from our side never happened but uh, uh, i i was uh, aware of the ins and outs of what what plan rv was going to and uh, now since um, there is a heightened uh, interest in moving forward with that that idea and i'm more than glad to be here in the team Thank you. He's going to sit in on different meetings that we host and that sure. kind of thing, just to get a feel for the players and the partners and everything like that. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. A, a serious comment data can be very influential in the forward progress of any organization. You've got to look at the past. I'm a former data as you may have, but you've got to look at the past and see what the projections are to be able to at least grasp at the future. That's true. And uh, I also believe that data can be the centralizing factor that pulls different entities together. For example, different counties, different localities, because everybody can understand the quantitative nature of the data. And there is no, I mean, there will be ambiguities, but fewer. <laughs> the ambiguities we're going to leave to you to smooth out. Sure. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. You'll probably have fun with this group. I hope so. Yeah. Um, well, just a quick update. I know the next item on the agenda, we'll skip over minutes. That's yeah, okay. Skip over um, minutes as we for can the act on those. Brand story implementation. Uh, I've been working with John Newman. I know you and I have emailed a little bit about this, but yep. um, they're ready to go at the Hodges Partnership to help us with the implementation of the brand story. So, as you all know, we, we had that presentation from Brand Federation at the board meeting in March. And um, generally, I think good feedback. I think, you know, it's, it's always hard at that point because you want to be able to make sure that you don't head, head down a path where folks are going to say, whoa, how did, how did you get here? At the same time, as you know, the, the place where we were in the process, it wasn't finalized. It was, you know, this is what we think the, the narrative should sound like, but it wasn't the finished words. And so I think a little bit of the presentation was was kind of hard. It's like, am I reacting to what I'm paging through in this booklet and what I'm seeing on the screen, or is it just more kind of, does this feel right? And it was the, in fact, the latter that we were asking the board. But right, as exactly. you know, it's kind of hard for a group of thirty five people to not be wanting to respond to something that's physically in their hands. So, um, 
I've had Especially a couple. Especially something soft and squishy. That's and right. Brand. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I've had a couple of conversations with some board members afterwards to kind of make sure that they um, feel okay. But generally speaking, I haven't gotten any concerns raised. Um, I think there was a lot of affirmation in the discussion that day about. Um, it was interesting, um, Ms. Pritchard was here, for example, who's not normally in attendance at our board meetings, but I mean, she shared, you know, she's chaired this board before and has been around in the community for a long time at the regional planning table. And, and you know, it's been kind of a challenge that we've struggled with for a long time. So um, there were, you know, those kinds of, of sentiments uh, conveyed in the meeting. But anyway, all that to say, we are moving but, but forward. Like when she shared her opinion about that, then she said, but we're on the right track of yeah, fixing yeah. that problem, I think, I think even she, though she may not have understood the whole presentation exactly. origin. Yeah, okay. exactly. I think, you know, she's like, yeah, this is this is something that when I was here, this is something that the board was talking about. And, you know, I mean, maybe a little bit of dismay that we hadn't figured it out yet, um, but also kind of some some confirmation that it's important and um, that the the message that we try to relay about who we are and what we do is is kind of sticky and complicated so it was good that we were you know asking for help to do that so yeah mrs o'bannon had a couple of comments that i didn't take were negative but i took that she wanted to see one change and i don't call exactly what it was is, is. um yeah i think we those those items of feedback so she mr chambers a couple people had like some really kind of targeted feedback that the team was able to benefit from so that's getting incorporated in i i agree with you i can't remember the specific of what the which one of the four dimensions um she had some some comments on and again i think that was one of those things where also we wanted to make sure in the moment where we were getting that feedback those diagrams and the words on those page weren't necessarily what we're going to be they were not examples of the final product they were still need to be wordsmithed final, and, uh, um final thematic, quotes yeah so thematically that was the frame you know that's the framework that we will use but yeah. the verbiage i think still very much has to be crafted and, and that's which is what we're starting that's right that's right. the next phase that, that the hodges partnership has been given the green light so we have to you know we have to do our paperwork on that but um the the idea will be that that the implementation will include a workshop with this committee and with our staff as two sure. different groups so our staff need to be trained on the language that we need to use kind of how to build that um, consistency of, of verbiage and and communication what feels comfortable for us and then similarly with this committee We'll probably not do a training workshop with the whole board, um, but we will right. want the this committee and ideally to champion that so that we start to incorporate that into communication and, and some things like that. And I know Rashawn is going to talk a little bit more of some um, projects and priorities looking forward, but of how you'll kind of board members, I think we'll start to see this come alive. Um, but, you know, sort of that administrative next step of, of moving the task order forward for for Hodges to do that. And it's about I think it's a 90 day process or so. So the idea would probably be that we would want to schedule your next committee meeting focused on this workshop. Um, so we'll want to look at kind of time. Maybe of open that. it up to I think a so. few more volunteers. And potentially, the... since we're at that time of the fiscal year where we would be revisiting membership, this could be a good opportunity to open the invitation if there's other short, short members. time volunteer instead of long term. Volunteer. Yeah, and if folks might be interested in joining the committee, this could be a great, great. orientation to that. Okay. So, so we can talk a little bit more about the scheduling and I know we're headed into summer so that, you know, as another element, but um, that would be that would be what the, I think this committee would want to focus on from a agenda perspective. Next time you get together. 90 day process puts us in August. Is there anything important about any particular dates heading into the fall where we want some of this stuff done um, for the second half of the calendar year? Schedules have a tendency to get longer, not shorter. Right. Which I'm a right. big fan of trying to prevent if I can. Yeah. So I think that the workshops, if memory serves, are kind of in like their second you know, the, in the 60 days or so window. So I think we can be flexible um, of where that fits. They they have to do some audit work. They're not unfamiliar with us. So 
John thinks that the audit work is actually not going to be as time intensive as their original proposal said, but um, I can I'm, check I'm, with I'm them. I'm more thinking in sort of the product that comes out of this whole process and when would we prefer to have that done by as we look into the fall? Is there anything in October, November? That's happening event-wise? Um, not like we've had in the past. I mean, we've we've had some things that I would have traditionally anchored around, but this is going to create a kind of a different opportunity for us to. I can't think of it yeah. either. I'm just so um, so we have we have the luxury of really being able to do this how and when we want. Um, I I'm, I sound a little bit cagey because Rashonda's going to go over some things that I think we've already got our wheels turning on how the story of Plan RVA can get embedded into some frequency of events that we've got upcoming okay. and that kind of thing. Um, but I don't know that there's a single event where there's going to be like a big grand reveal. I'm you know. also going back to what you need know, out of us is we right. need to cover with the rest of the board of why this is going to yeah. go on a regular cadence. So what would so. be nice is that this really gets um, kicked off as it were at the beginning of the fiscal year so that this is, you know, kind of a whole year of that, um, you know, run, if you will, um, that would be kind of the ideal. Which so is fiscal year's month. We're July, July. To, so, so having, you know, kind of coming to the full board in September, for example, is a nice okay. time of time frame, you know. All right. I might be leaping ahead, but I've got a question before I sure. um, leap ahead. The 90 day time window that we're talking about is a final, final product for the, the branding, am I correct? The story. I'm sorry? The brand story. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of agree with that for a couple of reasons, and I might be stealing your thunder, but one of the presentations, I'm about to suggest a little bit later on um, that we might consider a presentation at VML and VACO, um, a, a, a breakout session, or uh, have a presentation with other regional TPOs um, at, at VML, it'd be just Richmond and Ashland, that would be our clients, and at VACO, all of all the counties. And also, um, VML does a after an election, mm -hmm. mayors and chairs, mm -hmm. and our uh, presentation to mayors and chairs, again, Ashland and Richmond might be a good thing with other regional TPOs, but to have our documents and presentation, um, Mr. Parsons might be a good presenter, sure. but coordinate with the others so that new elected officials or those at, at VML will be in Richmond on October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So that would be convenient for those current elected and maybe new electeds, not in October, of course, new elections, not in October, but for those that might not be completely intimate with what we do and where we fit yeah. encompassing them. So a little bit of background on that. Um, Planner VA is a member of the State Association of Planning District Commissions and VML, VACO and VAPDC have a strategic alliance. Um, every February when we do the winter convening year in Richmond, the three organizations co-host a reception it's the legislative reception. So that event always um, coincides with the local legislative days. Legislative on the, day, yeah. 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 So we we have had COVID kind of put a kink in sort of those things. So this, I want to say, started about five years ago. And we had, I think, two years of a really good run of actually um, VML and Baco gave us the lobby area in the OVNI outside of the reception room where we were able to put display booths up. Every PDC that wanted to could do that and we could, you know, interact and mix and mingle. And that was the two years I recall we, we participated. It was it was really great. Um, and so hopefully as this 2022 wasn't, I don't think, a, a, a great year to test the waters on what that looked like coming back. But I, I think that there's room for, for that to continue. Um, we also do regularly kind of cross promote. So VACO is having their regional meetings upcoming. Um, they always work with the planning district commission that serves the, the VACO regions are a little different than our PDC footprint, but they always work with us to help promote that. So that's actually just come through my inbox last week um, to help with. And 
So there is some good kind of synergy. We're not as active with VML, quite honestly, just because it's, it is the two jurisdictions, but um, I know my colleagues at other PDCs are, are quite active with VML. Um, I also, again, wearing my not so much Richmond hat, but um, VA PDC hat, have attended the local government, um, local elected officials, new elected official training. I think the last time I did it when they we were in person here in Richmond, it was 2019, it must have been. Um, so there have been, anyway, there's been those things, and I think you're raising a good point that post-pandemic we should revisit what those opportunities look like. Um, I haven't historically gone myself to the VML and Baco conferences just from a cost perspective, but um, we've always tried through our state association to make sure that there's coverage <laughs> from colleagues or, or that kind of a thing. So those are just a couple of off the top of my head um, thoughts about that, but it's, it's a good point. Um, I do think that with Hodges, you know, a big part of the engagement with them will be to do this audit of what how we're currently talking about ourselves and um, then create those key messages focusing on the four roles, seer, convener, planner, shaper. Um, and then they'll do that workshop with staff to train us. They'll do the workshop with the committee. Um, and then the idea would be to build out that collateral, but um, under a separate engagement that we have with them, they'll also be helping us to sit down with media and start to really be able to um, build a stronger rapport for two reasons. One, when we issue a press release, we want them to cover it, right? So you might have seen the recent coverage that we have gotten, which has been really nice about our office move and I think BizSense and CBS and maybe one other outlet picked it up. Um, and then the CBTA coverage has also um, you know, been, I think, as a result of that active outreach on our part. One thing that we want to do with media, though, is, is let them know that we can be actually a resource for them on background. So we don't need to have stories about Plan RVA for us to be useful in getting that story out about regional cooperation and what the localities are doing together. We can be a useful kind of like, hey, I'm trying to do this story about this thing. Who could I call? You know, and, and we can be that, um, you know, assistant source. sent to them. A, a comment I saw in the the media last week about CVTA was soliciting recommendations at Friday's meeting. I meant to come and advocate for 64, but life got in the way. I apologize. Good work in getting it Good. on the news. And, I, and I, I'm a news junkie, so that's quite effective. Anything? Continue the good work on that. Yeah, I think I, I didn't count the comments. You think there were like 30 some written comments that came in? Wow. We didn't have anyone come to speak during the public hearing, um, but there there were quite a bit of substantive comments. You know, I mean, it was pages, I don't know, 50 pages of comments or something like that. Yeah. Maybe the packet was 50. It, it was a substantive um, mm. set of comments that came in. And that's all you know, Rashonda and Sid doing that work to um, publicize the public hearing, the comment period. So, so that's my update on that number three. Um, of where we are, and I, I, let me work with John a little bit more on schedule and kind of see about how we could. Well, I think I that. think just you know, working backwards from full board and yeah, September. Yeah, we want to target then. Yeah, we need to and do then the work then. that we need to okay. do to have the pre games and the studies good. done. Okay, so it doesn't get me on there. Okay, great. Well, I know Rashonda has prepared um, some updates. So Please. Yeah, been a lot going on yet again. Right. Thanks, Martha. Sure thing. So, um, yeah, I have some updates for the committee. So now I haven't been at Plan RVA um, for six months with the support of my supervisor, Martha, as well as the community engagement coordinator, Sid, and Plan RVA team members. I'm excited to share some updates, some accomplishments, and FY23 imperatives or priorities that we'll get to. Um, so the first goal of the community engagement um, strategy is to increase awareness of Plan RVA and to foster an understanding of our organization's work and role. And so we've hosted uh, four Better Together webinars uh, since January. Uh, the first being uh, with GRTC on micro transit. Um, our special guest was Julie Tim. Uh, in February, we had the Bike Ped um, RVA 2045 uh, team 
two, which was our Plan RVA colleagues, uh, Barb, Phil, and Dan, come on and talk about what the bike ped plan is. Um, in March, we had uh, Jovan Burton, who serves as the executive director with Partnership for Housing Affordability, which is also our grant partner that we're working with um, on the on housing. Uh, in April, we just had uh, Kim Hines with the Central Virginia Waste Management Authority. And uh, in May, we'll be uh, speaking with Porter, Virginia. And so uh, since January to now, we've had over 100 attendees. Um, Sid has started working to collect analytics from our outreach and promotion efforts just to see how we can reach more people. Um, we've also started working on scheduling for the next fiscal year and welcome ideas from the committees on, from the committee on topics, um, speaker suggestions, as well as promotion. Uh, we love your insight on how to better reach your constituents. So for example, um, Tim, like we want to know like what are three ways that we could get, you know, connected with Chesterfield residents. Um, some more to come on that. Um, updates on press releases and newsletters. So uh, we've been working with the Richmond Memorial Health Foundation on the market value analysis for 2020. And uh, we'll be getting a press release out about that. Uh, also the CBTA public hearing um, that Mr. Waddell just referenced, as well as um, most recently our new office location. Um, the new, for a newsletter, uh, we have been leveraging our partnership with Hodges um, and we're planning to launch a monthly newsletter in June. Uh, we'll be kicking it off with our joint annual meeting that's between the RRTPO, uh, the PDC and CBTA, which will be June 2nd. Um, for PIOs and communicators, uh, we have convened our uh, regional PIOs and communicators for a roundtable, I want to say at least twice. Yeah. We have an upcoming meeting. Um, uh, upcoming meetings are May 10th, June 7th, and July 28th. Um, just an opportunity to share about Plan RVA, what we're doing, but also understand how we can get, you know, connected with their constituents. Um, and just promote the great things that are happening out in our localities. Um, brand strategy with Hodges, which uh, Martha just shared on. Um, we've been working internally uh, while the branding strategy and process is still happening just to uh, create some common language to help tell our story uh, verbally and in written communication. Um, if you've attended any of the most recent um, Better Together webinars, I typically started with like who we are. And so something I've shared is um, Plan RVA is where we come together to look ahead. Established in 1969, the Richmond Regional Planning District Commission, known as Plan RVA, has been the home of cooperation among the nine jurisdictions of Central Virginia for more than 50 years. Today, we focus in areas of community development, emergency management, the environment, and transportation. We are the seer of the future, convener of our member jurisdictions and regional partners, creator of plans of actions and shaper of Central Virginia's future. Tomorrow's solutions are born here. So that's just a little blurb that we've been using internally. Um, staff have you know, been encouraged to use similar language to tweak it so that it feels natural and good to them when they're out giving external presentations, um, when we're representing Plan RVA at community events, um, and also when we're drafting plans. So we've um, found ways to incorporate this language um, in our bike pad 2045 plan along with our uh, Richmond Crater Hazard Mitigation Plan. And so just starting to make sure that we have that um, alignment in our language and who we are, um, again, when we're out in the community, but also in our um, written plans. Uh, next steps, like Martha shared, is brand, brand implementation. And so that was just um, a summary of uh, some of the ways that we have moved towards um, goal one, which is again, in increasing awareness of Plan RVA. Uh, goal two is to increase participation in Plan RVA comment process and ensure respondents are representative of the Richmond region. And so um, three of the public comment uh, periods that we've held are the, the bike ped RVA 2045, 
the Richmond Crater Hazard Mitigation Plan, as well as the CVTA public hearing. Um, and there's more to come um, on those. Uh, BIPED is currently working on our um, community outreach report. And, um, you know, despite our efforts of going out into the community, a lot of the respondents still, um, the data showed seems to be able-bodied white men. And so uh, more on that and, and our um, plan of action around that to make sure that we're, you know, increasing respondents from um, underrepresented communities. Goal three um, of our community engagement strategy is to increase community collaboration. And so Plan RVA has, bu has been busy. We've been out in the community. Um, right now we're working with the Gen Richmond Memorial Health Foundation on the market value analysis for 2020. Um, we'll be adopting that on our, our website, but also um, we're working to figure out how to really get this data out in the community and figure out how we can support um, groups that are using it, whose you know mission is around um, creating a, a more equitable region. Uh, we were able to attend the Black Girls Do Bike annual kickoff um, ride, which was a great opportunity to again get out there. We had a, a table set up so we could talk about Plan RVA. Uh, we talked about the bike ped plan um, and just cultivating relationships, starting to um, let more people know who we are and what we do. Uh, we also attended the Flying Squirrels block party. Um, Martha and I uh, participated in the captain's table, which is sponsored by Sands Anderson and Atlantic Union Bank. Um, the audience for that was CEOs and executive directors of Richmond's nonprofit organizations. Uh, Plan RVA also attended the VCU um, career fair. Uh, most recently, we did Keep Virginia Cozy, which was an Earth Day cleanup where staff volunteered. Uh, this past weekend, we were at the Native Plant Festival. Uh, we had a team at the Ucrops Monument 10K. We had a Plan RVA team, so some staff participated in that. Um, and then continued representation. We were at the Chamber RVA annual meeting. Uh, attended the Richmond Tourism Awards in meeting, um, Fly and Squirrels Day at King's Dominion. Uh, we had a staff happy hour, but it was with RVA Green Drinks with Capital Region Land Conservancy. Um, and we're um, collaborating with RVA Engage, which is a civic, civic action series. And it seeks to inform and catalyze community members to engage in the issues that they care about most. So we've already had uh, one session on early childhood education. Um, our next session is workforce development, which will be May 11th at 630, um, as well as uh, Martha and I will be um, coordinating and leading the housing session in the fall. Uh, some of our confirmed upcoming summer events is the k Pasa Festival, which is uh, this weekend, uh, the Multicultural Festival, um, which is sponsored by Office of Immigration um, Blanket, but it's O-I-R-E is the acronym for it. Um, but we were able to connect with them because we did a bike pad presentation. So um, yeah, so we were invited to come to their upcoming festival. And then also uh, we are supporting the Emergency um, Management Alliance with their squirrel sponsorship. And so we have seven um, confirmed community nights and two of those nights will be dedicated to Plan RVA. Um, the other five will be when we invite other preparedness partners to come out. Um, and so that's- uh, Are you tired? <laughs> <laughs> like looking at the list, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, feel free to stop me. <laughs> we, we've done a lot, I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. Um, and then our last goal um, of the community engagement strategy, goal four, is about increasing awareness among Plan RVA staff on unconscious bias and existing community engagement practices and to mitigate to the best, the greatest extent possible. And so uh, we launched our Mamba Mentality Lunch and Learn series. Uh, Mamba Mentality, the phrase being you know, coined by the late Kobe Bryant, but it's this desire to become um, a better version of oneself. It's always about just progress. And so uh, we launched in February, we had our uh, masterclass series um, on 
they had a Black History Month series on Masterclass. So we went through watching some of the uh, presentations together and having discussions um, as a staff in March for Mamba Mentality. We did Mindfulness March. So just um, Martha had reached out to staff during a um, staff meeting just to understand you know, how everyone is doing, what supports they may need. Um, and so just, you know, the pandemic further, you know, revealed disparities within our region. Um, there was a, a lot of civil unrest um, and, and staff were just uh, requested some resources around work-life balance and how to avoid burnout and um, just how to deal with regular day-to-day -day life stressors. And so we had two speakers um, from the Inner Work Center that came and talked to us about mindfulness and offered some mindfulness resources. Um, and then April, we looked at uh, disparities in media coverage and law enforcement response when it comes to missing minority adults and children. Um, we talked about that as a staff and just why we think that is. Um, and then also uh, we um, signed an official contract with Six Wheels Consulting um and this was really come out of like this rebranding effort and that we want to get it right from the start and so we want to make sure that plan rva is a place of inclusion um that means you know looking at our plans our documents our meetings office space um language just all of it being around inclusion um and so uh, that's what I have on on goal four, and then just an update on the our on call bench that we're working with and our task orders. Um, we recently met with our on call bench partners to ask them for feedback on how we're doing as a partner. Uh, discussed how to bring more awareness to um, their services and how we can share that with our uh, localities. Um, and we talked about some of the potential upcoming task orders just to let them know what would be on the horizon. Um, Cause we always want to praise the, the great work that they're doing for us and make sure that that is generating more work for them as well. Um, to date, we have issued 12 task orders to the on-call bench. Uh, six of those have been completed, the community engagement strategy, comprehensive public outreach for emergency management, preparedness guide, uh, Title VI update, um, the Long Range Transportation Plan public outreach, um, and the Bike Pet public outreach. We currently have six that are in progress. So our branding um, strategy work with Brand Federation, um, our Title VI training that we're working on, flood awareness campaign, the Emergency Management Alliance, Alliance Preparedness website, um, strengthening those media relations, as well as our Flying Squirrels, anti-terrorism and emergency preparedness sponsorship. Um, so lastly, just thinking about the community engagement strategy, I guess we can get into this more, should I pause? Yeah. Okay, to, yeah, cool. Take a breath. All right, <laughs> yeah, we'll pause. And did any of the nine jurisdictions pick up the bench for anybody, any task yet? Yeah, I think, Independent of I think we've seen one jurisdiction. However, we did, unfortunately, as much effort as I thought we had gone through to kind of make it as seamless there were still some extra things that had to be done so actually yeah. yeah um but the feedback from the firms was like it's okay we don't we don't mind they still see you know so i i mean i as you know i was kind of worried about would we have enough work to sustain this group and then of course now we've had the 12 task orders but yep. and i think that at least one other pdc has uh, also reached out and purchased through the cooperative procurement as well so yeah, it's been good. Good. Then um, just a couple of thoughts as you're talking, and obviously the, the effort is incredible. Um, so obviously um, we're going to do what we can to sort of keep amplifying what the need to have all the resources you need. Um, but then obviously the messaging about why we're doing all this stuff, I like the way that you keep sort of tying it back to the specific, very specific goals. Um, but a thought that I've had sort of as you're sort of talking to, to some degree, part of why even data was brought on board as part of the strategic plan, there's value in what we're doing. So as I think about this, I think about, all right, if we were going to try to monetize our efforts, how would our message be slightly different? And the example that I sort of think about is Midas of Richmond. They're a business 
that clearly has figured on community engagement as part of what their strategy is. So every advertisement for Midas of Richmond is something related to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But clearly their business is booming because they're fixing a lot of mufflers and doing a lot of brake jobs and they're doing a lot of oil changes as well. So it could be sort of an interesting sort of perspective for us to sort of keep thinking about it. So if we were a business, how do we capitalize on all of this good work? There's really no action item there other than just sort of thinking yeah. a little bit differently because that's the flywheel effect is when he figured out a way to basically get his brand out there for certain causes, his business just skyrocketed. Yeah. So it'd be a healthy way for us to sort of think about it. It's a great example. So, yeah. And then the other thought I had, and this is a little bit more cerebral because it's harder, is what if Plan RVA didn't exist? If, if we weren't doing this stuff, what wouldn't happen? It's just a couple different ways to sort of think about how we sort of tie all this stuff together. Excellent look at what, what we accomplished by if we weren't doing it. And then one other comment you made in goal number one is, is the way that you sort of got a script, a script written. You used the term community development. Yes. Which is a misunderstood term. And I think all nine jurisdictions might state that slightly different. So I have a tendency to, unless community development is one of our stated objectives, I might suggest we stay away from that. But uh, that's more for discussion than for stating we, my opinion yeah. is correct. But we, we I, I, would, I would suggest the nine jurisdictions don't believe they rely on Plan RBA for community development. Mm -hmm. So if we're trying to be consistent with what they do rely on us for and what they don't, that might be a slightly tough place for us to demonstrate that that's one of the things that we're doing. Because in some jurisdictions, it involves land use and economic development and everything sort of built in together and sort of community development, like for Sharon Ebert sits. Right. It's everything on the development side inside the city of Richmond. And Henrico and Chesterfield is a bit different. But. That's a good point. Thank you. Those are just three comments. They're not critiques. They're just ways to try to help enhance Appreciate everything that you're doing and amplify the right stuff. That's all. Thank you. Any comments? Yes. First off, excellent presentation. I am in awe of what I'm going to say we, you are accomplishing. I'm not there doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I, got to show up on Saturday and say hi. <laughs> Can I get, I, I like to report back to my superiors. Can I get an outline or copy with, uh, of your presentation just to let my bosses know what is going on? I do have some questions. Um, I, I'm over, again overwhelmed by everything and I agree with your comments. The market value analysis, does that include housing, health, population? What demographics? are in that analysis? There are no demographics in it. It's only housing market conditions. So, and it's uh, at this point in time, it's inclusive of Henrico, Chesterfield, and Richmond City, uh, where the density is such that the team can compile and evaluate the data. Um, Richmond Memorial Health Foundation engaged a company organization, I should say, called the Reinvestment Fund out of Philadelphia to do this work. We're just going to become the host for the data. Um, so Serena, as, as mentioned, got to be on the team when he was at VCU for 2017. Then this refresh, so we're going to have a 2017 look at the data and a 2021 look at the data. What has changed in these neighborhoods? Um, and they have a pretty complicated way of evaluating the data points and categorizing neighborhoods according to the market conditions. So they can sit, take, you know, my neighborhood in the city of Richmond and compare it to Roshanda's neighborhood in Chesterfield County and sort of draw similarities and distinctions between parts of that three jurisdiction region and what's happening in the market conditions to understand it on a regional level. I, I'm a little confused. Um, it's the housing market. Is it just prices? You've got, if you're looking at the housing market, you've got to look at single family versus it's 
multiple family and how many in those houses it's pricing it's tenure so renter versus owner occupied it's vacancy <clears throat> rates it's um days vacant you know Four with the forecl yeah foreclosure rates um you know with the turnover or the churn and the in the home selling home buying um area it's looking at um we have the ability to overlook mortgage um mortgage application approvals by by geography i don't think that that's been pulled in but um you know those kinds of things but it's it's not people focused i mean you can look at it and then um the local government representatives that served on the steering committee from the city chesterfield and henrico obviously they know those communities and they can kind of say well this is what's happening there or that but um it's all like administrative data basically okay part of that i Y'all know what y'all looking for, looking at, and how to analyze. I don't, but I would suggest that some of the people side of it might need to be looked at. If you've got in neighborhoods, gentrification is where I'm going with some of this. You need to analyze that for the, the risks and the benefits. Um, but then again, I might be expanding. No, it's, I think that that's like sort of the next stage. I mean, okay. the, the intention is to be able to basically take people out of the equation so that we can see what those underlying characteristics are and then add people back in to see how the human element changes how we think about these neighborhoods, you know, in, in all different kinds of ways um, to understand. And so a lot of the discussion from the steering committee over the last six months has been about um, if we were to look at demographics, would this neighborhood that went from a state of decline to a state of um, acceleration what happened to the people in that neighborhood? Did the people change? You know, what drove, you know, and so, so that's sort of the next stage, but this, this exclusion of people, if you will, is what be able to base, the baseline. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, so now we have that baseline from 2017 and we have that baseline from 2021. And then we add the people data over top of it to say, well, how does this impact people's lives? You know, how does this, how does the changing dynamic of the market conditions underlying a neighborhood impact whether or not this set of people had the opportunity to live there anymore or not, you know, and those kinds of things. Um, I think it's going to be really informative to Chesterfield County and their strategy for how they allocate their federal grant funds for affordable housing and com community development. Um, and similarly in Henrico, the city, you know, they've indicated that this is going to be really useful in how they think about the administration of the housing trust fund. So really being able to kind of understand, you know, where are these neighborhoods where it's from an underlying housing condition perspective, housing market conditions, it's impractical to think that there's going to be, you know, a set aside of affordable housing um, or without significant public subsidy, right? Versus other areas where are there, you know, kind of policy tools. And it also, I think, goes to last month's board meeting presentation from Karen Black about how can we think about the 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 cost benefit of investing in home repair versus new construction. I saw your eyes perk up last month when we heard oh, that, you know, yeah. the level of investment to replace existing or to repair existing stock versus the level of investment needed to create new. I mean, you know, the Delta on that is just crazy. Displacing big. folks so. could have a negative effect, helping to enhance, you yeah. get a lot, forgive the cliche, bang for the buck, but I, I sense yeah. potential. So, so Rashawn has been working with me to try to think about what's the strategy to to release the availability of this data. Serene will be working on how to dig into the data and start to ask those questions, like what do we need to look into? And that's where I think public outreach, community outreach, stakeholder outreach, and data really kind of converge. This is a great example in this project where we'll be able to convene some conversations with the localities and say, you know, here's what the data are saying. And then <clears throat> the localities can say what what's what hits them you know what what's what's important about this so we've been talking with chesterfield and henrico about how to take advantage of uli and the urban land institute and some of the resources through that and, and just sort of how do we start to have the right conversations with this data um to be able to equip uh, the jurisdictions to to make some of the decisions that are before, before them in the, in the coming weeks and months so that's kind of a little bit um so we're ahead of We're in the planning stages, I guess, would be the, the, the point with this. So I would say, you know, there's going to be more that I think we could talk to you all about in the three next three and six months about like where could this go? What's the but that's where we are right now. So the data compilation was completed, I think, March 31st and shape files got sent over to Mark Bittner on our team and 
Now we have to figure out how to make it useful to the stakeholders and the public. Start it's exciting. with an analysis of where we are data-wise it is definitely key for me to all the others. Yeah, I think uh, the way MVA is designed by the reinvestment fund, they basically look at a few uh, indicators that they believe uh, is going to uh, identify, classify a locality, a, a, a neighborhood into one of the eight groups that they have created. So the groups are color coded and you can tell which one is a weaker market, a middle market and a better market. But then, as Martha mentioned, our role probably going forward would be to overlay other socioeconomic characteristics, other data points that we can pull not only from census, from uh, other uh, sources, for example, uh, if we can get that, is uh, if people are selling their homes, going away, where are they going to? Can we find that out? Can we find out mobility within the region or outside the region? And also um, all those um, income rates and all those characteristics, maybe if possible, school quality metrics can be overlaid. And that's where we will start telling a more richer story, as you mentioned about people focused. So this is the market condition that has changed, which is people equation is, is, is taken out of the equation. Now we put back the layers and see uh, what, let's say, a market that was categorized as a classification E, which is pretty low in 2017, and now it is turned into a C. If that changed in the market, what changed? Like the demographics shifted, or the age group shifted, or the income group shifted, right? So those will be the overlays that we, we see we'll be doing in the next few months. You've got quite a challenge ahead of you. It is. But, it's fun too. <laughs> Engagement. Do you have other questions about that? I'm sorry. I know there's a ton of work going on. I'm sorry. I, I get. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure I, I we do. leave time for these priorities as well. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, one thing, a, a, a quick suggestion. I didn't hear it, and you, you may have already thought about it. Reach out to the Wilder School with um, what we do and where we are in the, in the community for our brand. I took uh, USRP. Uh, Land use, and infra uh, land use and infrastructure 428 and the other was 391, which was active and sustainable transportation policy. They had in those classes, it was an online class because of COVID, but they had speakers that pre presented. And I think this would be highly relevant in the undergraduate. Now, I didn't take any graduate courses, but there could be some things here that we offer that a graduate student could take and research and benefit from, from our foundation. So yeah, thanks for keeping me on track. I get That's a good suggestion. Thanks. Yeah. So you want to go into what you wanted to present about yeah, priorities? I think, yeah, you've got time to ask, right? A request. And, and I think Martha towards you know sort of the, the inreach side uh, of the to the board every time like when you actually tie things back to our strategic plan for the board I've noticed it's really really helpful because okay. Okay. Um, we are in a situation to some degree where we're saying yes to a lot of things the two most visible things to demonstrate that you're empowered to do Things in your strategic plan and say a no to things that, that are not in our strategic plan. Because yeah. otherwise, we're going to end up back to, I think, what got us in this place in the first place, which is we said yes to everything, yeah. which meant we were generalists, which meant we were average at a whole bunch of different things, and we want to be specialists. Yeah. Um, so saying yes has got some weaknesses to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rashonda finished her six month mark just a couple weeks ago of being here. So I hope by the last couple of times you can see, you know, the, the goal is that I'm not going to leave the committee, but she's, you know, really taking should, which she should leadership. Perfect. And, um, That's the way the infrastructure should be yeah. built. Yep. And she and Sid have been working through kind of what, what this more robust array of community engagement strategy, you know, community engagement implementation steps look like as they, you know, evolve. Um, as their roles evolve in the organization and who else needs to get pulled in on different things because obviously 
other staff members are are supporting and um, they're supporting, but then also kind of clients, right? Internal clients of of, of them. But I did ask Rashonda to kind of put together some thoughts for herself about what you know six from six months from now, twelve months from now, like what does she want to look back and say? Because the last six months, in fairness to her, she's been really running, trying to implement things that were set in motion by me. Right. <laughs> so really want to try to kind of like shift that kind of ownership structure of it. And so I think I, I wanted to share with the committee, I was just really excited about what she's identified as a pretty top priority objective. And we think that there's a role for you guys to play in helping her meet this goal. So okay. I wanted to say, I hope you all will take her request seriously. Thanks That's a lot. part of the cross training on the succession plan, yeah. if I recall. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Sure. Um, so we did some work just to look back at the previous year. Um, we met with Avid Corps just to talk about um, some of the accomplish accomplishments around the plan, but also um, what are the current needs? How can we move forward? And bringing the bike pit. Um, public comment period back into the conversation. Um, we reached out to, again, I can share those numbers with you. We're still building out that community report, but a lot of different constituents, um, but that was not representative when we looked at you know the comments that were received. And um, a priority going forward, we understand as a plan RVA that, you know, we do not speak on behalf of um, impacted community members. We provide opportunities for people to speak, to comment and engage for themselves. Um, and so when thinking about that, I shared with Martha that I feel our priority from the community engagement strategy going forward should be our focus of goal number two, which is increase in participation in plan RVA comment, comment process and ensure respondents are representative of the region. Um, the way forward that we feel we're able to do this is by um, really forging ahead with like community engagement, cultivating relationships in all of the in all of our localities. Um, and so, like we shared earlier, we talked about better together and promotion of that. It's just what are three ways that we might be able to you know engage with residents in Chesterfield, in Hanover, in Goochland. Um, how can we get out in the community and, you know, one, share about Plan RVA, but two, understand, um, I think it's making the, inviting them into the planning process. Um, historically, we know that certain groups have been left out. And so by uh, moving forward with goal number two as our priority, well, that's going to increase awareness of Plan RVA and who we are. So that being goal one, um, along with goal three. So we saw with, you know, reaching out to doing our presentation with Black Girls Do Bike led to us being invited to their kickoff event. And so that we hope, you know, will um, create more opportunities to collaborate and be in the community. And then also um, it touches on goal number four, which is we learn staff by inviting by not speaking on behalf of community members and inviting them to speak and comment and engage for themselves um it informs us how we can be better planners and better people so yeah we, we would love you know support from the committee and um again when it comes to better together so if you have um suggestions on speakers or topics or promotion so how to get you know involved with your stakeholders um, and cultivating those relationships, along with um, if there are community events um, or speaking opportunities. So we're looking to increase um, that as well. And then we will be, uh, we'll, we'll start summer intern recruitment fairly soon. And uh, a, a lot of the projects that we're looking at will help to um, further our, our work in goal number two. So concrete, relevant things that can sort of help you sort of build on the momentum of what you're talking about, that's sort of what you're asking us. Yes. Kind of. I think 
frankly, recognizing the the membership of this particular committee, you know, it's um, for a variety. Of, I'll be candid. The, the residents of the staff members reside in do not reside across all nine jurisdictions. Right. So, you know, I think each of us as individual people tend to default to the locality that we live and the neighborhood that we live in. And that's sort of our orbit. Right. And so we're asking, I think, for a little bit of help. Um, I only have one staff member that lives in Hanover County. You know, we don't have anybody that lives in Goochland County on staff. So asking committee members to help us think about even where we have quite the majority of our staff members, I think, still live in Chesterfield or maybe in Rico, a combination of the two. Okay. You know, they only live in the neighborhood that they live in. So how do we think about connecting across these very large geographies and making sure that we're showing up at, you know, the doing table events and booths and things like that? That are going to reach across the region. Okay. And, and to her point, the different localities are wildly diverse. I mean, we've got maybe not urban, but we've got the suburban service area, which is high density. Then we got the countryside, I think. So we're two, maybe three different, and acknowledging the challenge. And I think we want to, I think at the beginning of processes, we want to sort of engage with this committee a little bit differently to say, you know, here are the things we're trying to accomplish with this public outreach. We want to get people to show up or we want to get people to give comment and ask you all to help us be smart about not assuming that we know what folks in the rural community care about versus a more, you know, dense, um, you know, land use pattern or something. Um, I, I think, you know, we know logically that people live in one community and work in another <laughs> their life doesn't necessarily happen in one you know one until sphere. The so yeah um but you know there's a lot more intra-region commuting happening on a daily basis and i think we really give give credit to so um just i think we would we've just been thinking about that when rashonda brought this to my attention that this was something that she really felt like we needed to move forward we think that it's also a better product, quite frankly, when we come to the TPO or the CBTA or the Plan RVA board and the 37 pages of public comment feel like they're more representative of the whole of the constituency as opposed to yeah, well, you know, I, an interest group who mobilized their... Yeah, well, I would, I would tell you, working in real estate development for 35 years, getting that go-to list people that actually want to make things happen instead of stop things from happening. If you can figure out a way to do that. It's like that, the Holy Grail, right? <laughs> I was just going to say, you would just have monetized this organization. So, I mean, it, the, only, the, the way you get community engagement is you come out and say, I want to build a landfill somewhere in the middle of downtown Richmond. And you <laughs> get community engaged. Or a 2,300-acre rezoning for the next Intel in Chesterfield, you will get the community engaged. Trying to do it in the affirmative, and the four help so you guys are trying to build community engagement to help execute this strategic plan. That's a bigger challenge than community engagement to stop a yeah, real estate absolutely. development project. So I would say it's a great cerebral conversation for us to have. And if we could solve it, it would be a home run, but and the holy grail, as you said, but it's tough. Well, I, I would say too, and we've had this discussion in the board meetings and in the committee meetings, you know, are we really about broad-based public engagement or are we about, you know, engaging with our stakeholders? And it's a little bit of both, quite honestly, because, you know, we do, but, but I think um, in anticipation of our leadership um, changes in, in July, I do think that our, our vice chair, Mr. Davis, has been very clear with me, his expectations of how many visits can we pay to our local government bodies, the boards yep. of supervisors, what kinds of communication tools, this newsletter that Rashad has shared about, how do we start to get better, better frequency of information to the jurisdictions about what's, you know, what, what opportunities there are to connect, how do we leverage those platforms, you know, Chesterfield has the podcast program now, and um, Mr. Thornton has been so wonderful the last couple of years to always invite us to do one of his community meetings. And how do we really kind of lean into that? Uh, something you said is I believe, yeah, that the, the necessary goal for us is stakeholder engagement. The 
added over and above and beyond is general citizen engagement, in my opinion. Because, I mean, that's one, it's a bigger challenge. Uh, and two, what I said before is it's tough. I mean, unless you're actually really trying to solicit input from the broader community for a particular purpose, either to start something or stop something, you know, having, you know, 48,000 regular correspondents, you know, that are going on with general citizens right now, you got to figure out why would you want that? So it would be to sort of tell the board members that you've got that in your arsenal if and when you need to deploy it. Well, I mean... So by itself, it's not a goal, as forward my point. Yeah. It's a tool that we would use to the greater board's advantage if they sort of needed to rally on sort of some kind of a regional, um, regional priority. Well, I think, yeah. And I mean, you know, the reality is this year was... A big year for us because we had the long range transportation plan, the bicycle, the regional bicycle and pedestrian plan and the hazard mitigation plan, all of which really cycle on like a five year cycle, but they all happened in one year because you know, that's just the, the way that the timeline is unfolding. We won't have those major regional planning efforts you know, that are subject to public comment and review come around again for right. another three and a half, four years. So yeah, it's a tricky thing, you know, when you only really need the public to know who you are once every three and a half years, who's gonna come? I mean, they don't know, you know, so it's this drumbeat in the middle of that with our localities and our stakeholders um, so that when we do need to go out for those, you know, and then when we are doing the public engagement on behalf of the CBTA or, or what have you, yep. You know, there's something foundational. The, the muscles there. have been exercised exactly. enough, so you don't have to restart. Exactly. Yeah. So that's where that's where I think I would steer us towards is, is making sure that the board members are on this table understand the reason why we're doing this is to accomplish bigger things. So I think that that's where you know, outside of, I mean, we can certainly work with the CAOs and the clerks departments to get you know kind of the, the three minute briefing that you get you know, but that's not a great way, frankly. So we're looking for I think other tools. Yeah. This newsletter is it going to speak? You know, but what are those other ways that can kind of? Um... I, th I think better together is a good platform to sort of use. It does sort of remind me of you know the Fed's outreach mm -hmm. program. You know, the Fed has done a great job. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they have a little bit more of a marquee uh, sort of brand. Yeah. You know, and what they've got. So they were sort of starting with that brand and. Most people wouldn't suggest that there are any experts in monetary policy the way the Fed is, so we sort of count on them to take care of monetary. Everybody thinks they don't have a plan, so that's sort of more of a weakness. It's, it's like the planning is a little bit more of a yeah. career, more so than a expertise. So, but better together, I think, is maybe where we sort of build on because that is uniquely plan RBAs, and if we can broaden the exposure to that and the value of that and start building an audience sort of looking at google or looking at facebook and we start using that better together as a way to sort of assemble an audience that might be something to build on so at least that's my initial reaction but i'll give it some more thought thank you so i think your idea is great the to better together is a, is a great start and put the links or in the newsletters the newsletter write a, a summary and a link to that and outreach to the stakeholders you made me yeah you're right it's the inertia against something is a whole lot easier to tap into than proactive but Hanover County's under undergoing the comp plan tune-up and I've the, the public outreach they've gotten lots of comments the infrastructure bill that has passed and monies are coming, a thought of putting something together, presentation analysis of the funds that are coming for all of the folks in the jurisdictions and to outreach those stakeholders, um, what folks expect, would want to see from that might be a good way to get positive in, input and to get plan RVA in front of folks at all levels. So okay. something like that. So, I mean, as a concrete thing, I mean, it feels like what we need is we need a 
next four month storylines for for better together something that would be interesting that we could use to sort of broaden the audience yeah and you know we've got our channels that we promote through social media um you know and i think sid has done a phenomenal job in um it's like that drum beat and the cadence and you know, the quality and the, the frequency of the content that we're pushing on social media. But, you know, we have only the people that follow us and see that. So it's the sharing. And that, that's a big part of um, the conversations that we have with the PIOs and communicators about, you know, if we send this out to you. Can you share it? You know, because you're, you know, in XYZ community, your followership is different than what it might be in the regional, you know, and so how do we start to leverage so, that? So, so thinking about, I, I was like trying to spend my time where circles overlap. Mm -hmm. Why not have the Fed be the next subject of Better Together? We could do that. That's a good idea. I mean, again, it's it's interesting yeah. to people, so therefore it attracts yeah, audience. That's a great idea. They may not think about doing it through Plan RBA, but yeah. A lot of other organizations, BC Real Estate's having them in, Chambers had them in, all people. Sort of That's a great idea. In. So since they have these, they could probably rec replicate one of their community, I forget what, district dialogues. Yep. They could almost replicate that. On yep. our, That's a great idea. It's just a way for us to yeah. leverage an existing tool and overlap in our circles and broaden our audience. Yeah. That's great. Another thought, Mr. Chairman. Oh, um, good. And we'll wrap things up here after. No, I, I'll try to be my usual brief. <laughs> um, the branding that we've got, and I'm, I'm going back to the FHWA and the FTA uh, audit. We got a great review on that. If we can include some of those comments in the final draft and up front, and then also our your our the staff's accomplishments on everything that you've talked about, the Better Together, and all of those that you're working on, kind of as a, uh, an addendum, kind of as a, a summary in the back. This is who we are, is the, the, the brand, but this is what we've done for you. Um, accomplishments. We just, I, I don't um, know, but all on one page or whatever yeah. format. Did you see Venture Richmond's annual report? Yeah. It was like just, I mean, it was just, um, Chet and I were talking about that last week and like that would be but it is good... I mean I mean personally for me you know doing the work's more important more important than telling people you're doing the work but I'm learning you have to do both yeah so um, when especially you when, you're, before, they, when they rely on money and donations we, for their for yeah. their funding they have to tell they need to remind us all what they're doing for us this organization is built on getting projects to completion and then you know literally the same day that we close the close the door on one we're kicking off and you know i mean we don't spend a lot of time um you know doing the after action but or, nor celebrating you know i mean we you know we click on to the next thing as quickly as possible and i think we're trying to be much more intentional about that um we know that celebrating those successes matters gotcha. to our staff from an engagement perspective you know, just a morale and employee engagement perspective but it's also a great way. I think you'll see a little bit of that in the regional, the annual meeting. We're going to try to do a chronicle of those accomplishments and the accolades that our staff have, you know, and, and create that annual joint meeting as a forum, if you will, to look back over the last twelve months. But it's um, it's a it's a struggle for for this organization for sure to remember to take a minute and. So the. I used it this morning when I was sort of talking to a young professional. I mean, part, part of one of the values of a brand is to be memorable. And I don't want you to steal this idea verbatim, but <laughs> what our marketing team does um, internally is each manager has their own walk-up music. And when our firm wins a project that they were working on, the manager actually plays their walk-up music. <laughs> as if they're walking up to the diamond to awesome. go to bat, and it's awesome because we cool. hear it reverberate through through the office when we know and recognize the walk-up music. But that both allows staff to celebrate and allows other people to remember the celebration. So it's something great, like yeah. that might be just yeah, just small idea. touches yeah. like that are memorable for the board as we all sit around and get to know. People see the report, you know, 
remember something about how it was reported yeah. that sort of builds this flywheel. That's a great board. idea. Which you're welcome. The, I don't have one. Oh, but it. it <laughs> but I need to get one. It's, it's a Superman theme with the Darth Vader yeah. theme. I'm just kidding. It'll probably be more along the lines of country roads. <laughs> Or fly that. fishing music. So, anything else we need to do today? Do you have any need? Yeah. You sure? Yes. Thank you. You can be more assertive in your ask if you like to be. Seriously, I mean, the, the committee. I, I, I need to speak for myself. I mean, talented, busy people who can afford to spend this time have got time here, but maybe not in between meetings. So, be very assertive to get out of us during these meetings what you need. Because it might be a few weeks before I can get around to thinking about it again. Or follow up on an email, like with your report and stuff like that. And that'll prompt us to think about what we promised we would do. That's a great idea. So that's okay. And, and I see my involvement in this committee as a permanent, ongoing, full, full time thing, not just a temporary thing once the branding is done. I, it's got to be. Yeah, so, yeah, think about how we take it forward then, maybe. Yeah. And to y'all's credit, you add value and you, the, the a quote, I think it was your quote two months ago, affecting the trajectory of the region. I, I see that it's, it's ongoing and I'm thrilled to be part of making a difference. We've got something here, let's tell, and figure your walk, what's your walk up song gonna be? <laughs> I don't think on that. <laughs> For me, it's staying alive. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to bring this to a close. I gotta run to another meeting. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank nice you. to meet you. you. Welcome Thank aboard. You. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Always look forward to this. Cheers, Thanks. Thank you. Oh. Thanks. I've got to get blood platelets this afternoon, so this is the highlight of my day. <laughs> oh my.